But Saudi Arabia is not the only candidate for mediation. China, too, has thrown its hat in the ring. Last week, Beijing proposed a peace plan. The West promptly rejected it, but Zelensky had a different response. He wants to meet Xi Jinping to discuss it. And even India could have a say. New Delhi has been engaging in quiet diplomacy. India has nudged Russia to not use nukes. And the Americans have now put it on record. I was uh, engaged with uh, my counterpart, Mr. Lavrov. Others were engaged with theirs. But we urged, and I think successfully, other countries that might have a little bit more influence with Russia these days, like China, uh, but also other countries like India, to engage him directly uh, about their absolute opposition to any use of nuclear weapons. That was America's top diplomat describing how the mighty U.S. needs help to tackle Russia. It's a pretty complex mess right now. No side wants to concede an inch. America's grandstanding has not achieved much and Europe is still debating on how to proceed. So they've left it to Zelensky to decide when Ukraine will stop fighting and when it will start negotiating with Russia. Until then, the West will keep throwing money at the problem. They'll keep pumping more weapons into Ukraine. But can they trust Kiev beyond a point? Last month, Zelensky carried out a purge. And now he has fired Ukraine's top commander. No reason given. His name is Edward Moskalyov. He was the commander of Ukraine's joint forces. His men were fighting in the Donbass. And Moskalyov was in charge since March 2022, right after the war began. Now suddenly he's been fired. What happened? No one knows for sure. Zelensky spoke to him on Friday and on Sunday he issued a decree. One line statement that announced the dismissal. Remember, Ukrainian forces are already on the back foot in the Donbass. Russia has been focusing on the east, specifically in Bakhmut. The Russians say they've made gains. The Ukrainians say they've pushed back. And now suddenly, their top commander is gone. This comes days after Zelensky fired at least 15 top officials. This included members of his inner circle. And these firings were on charges of corruption. The messaging and the timing could not have been worse. But the West is too invested in the war to pull out now. So they're sending more lethal arms. The much-awaited delivery of tanks began last week. Poland made the first deliveries. Long story short, instead of asking questions to Zelensky, the West is sending him arms and aid. And now he says he wants to talk to China. Zelensky wants to meet Xi Jinping to discuss his peace plan, the same plan that his Western partners dismissed. And here's something else that you must know. Since this war began, Xi Jinping has not spoken to Zelensky. Suddenly, he proposes a plan without consulting Ukraine, and Zelensky wants a summit with the Chinese president. Will she agree? No commitment from China yet. China's position on the Ukrainian crisis is extremely clear and consistent. Our core interest is to promote peace talks and push for the political solution to the crisis. We have always maintained communication with all relevant parties, including Ukraine. Maybe Zelensky could send a message through Macron. The French president is visiting China. He will travel to Beijing in April. Macron wants China to put pressure on Russia. He's looking for support on two fronts. Number one, stop Russia from deploying nukes. And number two, end the fighting as a precondition for talks. So expect Beijing to become central to the Ukraine story in the days and weeks ahead. In fact, tomorrow, China is hosting Alexander Lukashenko, the president of Belarus. Belarus shares a border with Russia and Ukraine, and Lukashenko is an important ally of Putin. He has allowed Russian forces to operate in Belarus, in his country, and launch attacks into Ukraine from his territory. Lukashenko is an important player in this game, so China wants to hear him out. Xi Jinping also has plans to visit Russia. So here's where things stand. Zelensky wants to talk to China. Macron wants to talk to China. Lukashenko is set to talk to China. Russia is already talking to China and seeking arms. And China is ready to play a big role, even propose peace. America doesn't like any of it. Their national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, has issued fresh warnings. We have, at this point, not seen them take the step of providing weapons to Russia for purposes of the war in Ukraine. We are watching closely. We know they haven't taken it off the table. And we are sending a clear message, as are our European allies, that this would be a real mistake because those weapons would be used to bombard cities and kill civilians, and China should want no part of that. 
In that interview, Sullivan referred to the reports from last week. China apparently wants to supply 100 drones to Russia. We told you about this last week. Beijing has rejected these claims that it will supply these drones. But the U.S. says the claims have merit. In fact, Washington has sanctioned some Chinese firms. On what grounds? The U.S. claims they're helping Russia. They're helping Russia fuel this conflict. And that if China goes ahead and gives more weapons, the West will impose more sanctions. Honestly, it's a bit rich coming from the U.S. America of all countries cannot accuse others of fueling the conflict by giving weapons. And frankly, their threats don't really work. Just look at Russia. Since last year, over 10,000 individuals, more than 3,000 companies and almost 500 institutions have been sanctioned. What is the result? The war hasn't stopped. The Russian president says the West is trying to break up his country. In today's circumstances, when all the leading NATO countries have declared their main aim is to inflict a strategic defeat on us so that our people will suffer, as they say. They have a single aim, to break up the former Soviet Union and its main part, the Russian Federation. Then, maybe they will accept it into the so-called family of civilized nations. But only separately, you see, each part separately. For what purpose? To coddle those parts and put them under their control. So how will the West respond to this? Russia is unrelenting in its offensive. China is challenging America and Ukraine. And Zelensky is keen to meet the Chinese president. One year into the war, the West is not winning on any front. What do you do when your country is on the verge of collapse? When you have no hope left for your motherland? Many leave in search of a better life for themselves and their children. For many of them, the West shines as a beacon of hope. They risk everything to get to European shores, and often they lose everything in the process. A boat carrying migrants has capsized off the coast of southern Italy. Dozens died as the rough seas tore their ramshackle boat apart. The migrants were from Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran and Somalia. So desperate were they to leave their crumbling nations that they decided to brave one of the world's most dangerous migration routes. Our next report brings you the details. Before the break of dawn on Sunday, the southern Italian town of Crotone awoke to a tragedy. Dead bodies had started washing ashore. A ship had capsized off the Italian coast. The ship may be too generous a way to describe the dinghy. It was a wooden boat, too small and fragile to survive the rocks near Crotone. The boat was ferrying about 170 migrants. It carried families, including young children. The migrants were from countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran and Somalia. Countries ravaged by war, plagued by economic crises, bereft of opportunities. These people left their homes looking for a better life. They boarded the questionable boat in Turkey. They were promised a better life if they set sail for Europe. Instead, for many, the boat brought death. After the boat capsized, Italian rescue workers were at the beach for hours. They worked frantically to try and rescue any migrants that washed ashore. The rough seas and crashing waves hampered rescue efforts. By the time the sun set, almost 60 people were confirmed dead. None of the children who had undertaken the journey survived. A one-year-old was among the dead. Around 30 people were still missing. The death toll is likely to rise. It is a day of grief for Calabria. This is a struggle that falls into a general indifference. Calabria is a region that welcomes people. Last year, we welcomed 18,000 migrants, but we can't be abandoned by Europe. This type of tragedy should have been avoided the day before and not lived how we are living it today and how we will live it tomorrow. Italy's Prime Minister, Giorgia Meloni, expressed sorrow at the deaths. She blamed human traffickers for the disaster, people who charge a fee to smuggle the desperate migrants into Europe. They were involved in this accident as well. During the operations, an alleged smuggler was also identified, together with a carabinieri patrol, and investigations are currently underway to ascertain responsibility for three other alleged smugglers, also of Turkish nationality, who are currently on the run and the search is ongoing. Every year, thousands cross the torrid Mediterranean Sea to seek greener pastures in Europe. 
and every year hundreds die. It's considered one of the world's most dangerous migration routes. 20,000 people have died or gone missing at sea in the central Mediterranean since 2014. UN estimates say the Mediterranean has claimed more than 220 this year alone. Yet despite the obvious dangers, people continue to try and cross into Europe. Even though Europe is reeling from the war in Ukraine, it's still preferable for the migrants compared to their battered home nations. Migrants try and land in southern Europe and then make their way up. Northern Europe offers them refuge and a chance at a better life. And can you blame them? Their choice is often between dying at sea or dying at the hands of their brutal, ineffectual government. At least with migration, they're given a small glimmer of hope.